Hey there, it's Dennis from BC Tesla Guy. In this video, I'm going to be comparing this V2 supercharger to a V3 supercharger, charging from 20 to 80 percent in my 2021 Tesla Model 3 SR Plus. So I went out to Hope and I charged there uh, from 20 to 80, and then I went up to Merritt and I did the same thing there. So um, I'm going to run those side by side and then we can see where the differences are. But uh, just a heads up, I at the supercharger in Merritt, it was full. And so I thought that it's probably gonna take quite a bit longer. Um, to my surprise, they're both pretty close. And so stay to the end of the video and you'll see what the differences are. And So you can see here I've got two charging sessions going at the same time and they're synced. So the V2 supercharger is up at Merritt and the V3 supercharger is the one at Silver Creep in Hope. And just a personal note here, you can see that the V3, the temperature was 23 degrees Celsius where the V3 was 17. Uh, both uh, charging sessions, I did get a precondition before and after checking the results, I didn't see that it was having any issues with charging uh, the precondition. So you can see right here that um, at the five minute mark, I was looking at uh, a difference of 7% between the two of them um, with the V3 supercharger jumping right up to 171 kilowatts in the first 11 seconds where the V3 jumped to 74 kilowatts at 35 seconds and maintained that until it hit 51%, where the V3 dropped uh, to 157 kilowatts after the first minute mark. So we're coming up on the 10 minute mark here. You can see that the V2 is at 42%, where the V3 is at 51%. The difference is 9%. It's getting a bit larger there, but um, you can see that the charging rates are dropped on the V3 and they're below the V2 charging. And so when we do get to the 15 minute mark, you will see that the difference between the two is only 7%. So it's just coming up fairly strong soon here. So at 15, uh, minutes uh, we're starting to tighten the gap here and so we're moving towards the 20 minute mark um, most people if they're just doing a quick charge um, the v3 is probably the best to have uh, but um, if you're going to do the 20 to 80 percent um, you'll see by the end of this that there's not much difference here so we're coming up on the 20 minute mark at that point, there's only a 6% difference between the two of them. And this, again, this is on my Tesla Model 3 uh, SR Plus. So as we move towards the 25 minute mark, you can see that the speed has dropped a bit more on the V3 compared to the V2. And we're going to see a difference at the 25 minute mark of only 5%. So we're getting pretty close to almost a complete charge, up to 80% on the V3. This is gonna end at 27 minutes and 35 seconds. Uh, and so then we'll just continue with the V2 till we finish that completion there, which is uh, coming up fairly quickly. Um, but the final result is that the V2 is going to end at 31 minutes, 13 seconds. So that means it took an additional three and a half minutes 
to charge at the V2 compared to the V3. Now, uh, when I did get to the Hope charger, it, it, there was only one or two people there. But when I went to the Merit charger, I had to wait and then the full charging was going. Uh, so it was fully, it was full there. Now we've gone on to the charging curve and I just wanted to point that out to you. Um, as you can see with that curve, uh, the V3 was at the top and the V2 is on the bottom. And what you can see there is that the V3 dropped off right away from its peak charging rate down gradually till it uh, finished the charge. Whereas the V2 held that 74 kilowatts for a sustained time and then it gradually dropped off there till it completed the charge. So here are my final thoughts. If you're charging at a V2 or a V3, it probably doesn't make much difference if you're driving a standard range plus and going for a long trip. If you're driving a long range or performance, then you'll get a bigger advantage from the V3 as they're able to charge up to 250 kilowatts. And I've seen people uh, on range getting uh, 230 to 240 uh, real life speeds and it will stay above the 170 kilowatt much longer and the other advantage is is the standard range plus battery is only 50 kilowatts whereas the long range and performance are both 75 kilowatt hours and so that window of fast charging is also larger so if you bring the battery down to 20 percent that faster charge range is going to be bigger for the long range or performance so those are my thoughts uh, let me know what you think and uh, leave a comment in the uh, below the video here